And we are in. Yay, another repotting video. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I'm going to do today is to do with begonias and this in particular. I don't know if you can see this. Yes, I'm going to get another camera. I've mentioned it a couple of times. Um, the problem that I've got at the moment is that I'm shooting with my iPhone, which I have done since I started the channel. And I don't, well, I noticed, I did it on television. I had a look at one of my videos on television and I noticed that when I do the selfie camera, the, the filming, you know, it's awful. It's really pixelated compared to what, what you see on a phone. So I thought, right, I've got to get one. Um, it's about time. So anyway, begonias. Look what happens if you have a rhizomatous begonia, and I'm really struggling to see this. I'm trying to look at the plant and look through the phone as well. This is what happens. They grow towards the edge of the pot, as rhizomes do. They spread along the surface of the soil and they grow over the side of the pot. Now, the problem with that is that this can no longer root. And you can see, maybe you can see little roots down there. It's trying, but it can't. So you can't leave it like that. Uh, you can't leave it in that situation. Mainly, one, it'll fall over, and two, it's not going to grow to its best, uh, you know, its potential. I also have uh, a begonia arachnoidea, which isn't looking great. I've chopped some of the leaves off, mainly because what happened was uh, over the summertime, this is one of those begonias that really does need the high humidity. And once the humidity started to drop in the summer, uh, I did nothing to protect it and it really declined. As soon as the uh, humidity started to go up again and you know I'll be honest it's been really humid all year round uh, if truth be done because it, it's rained all year it's rained all summer but in a greenhouse sun comes out the humidity plummets very very quickly and that was the issue so as soon as we got to the cooler temperatures then it's begun to grow again and we've got a nice new leaf there and more growth there despite the fact that it's not really warm so these when I've looked them up they don't need to be really warm yes if you want ideal optimum conditions you want to keep it 22 degrees celsius and above uh, but you know i'm dealing with a greenhouse i don't have optimal conditions so i can already i oh, might be able to see this see how the pot is narrower because the rhizome is squishing against the side of the pot so what i'm actually doing there is i am restricting its growth and i really want it to grow and if we have uh, a really good summer with less rain and more sun then it's going to struggle even more and i want to give it its best chance um, now that i have cleared all the hippiastrums out into dormancy i've got some more room i've ordered some very expensive species begonias which uh, i've not yet told hazel about <laughs> please don't mention it and um, we'll see we'll see what happens uh, when it comes to that time i will try and put some kind of protection into place so as I mentioned, this happens to all rhizomatous begonias. You can see this one. This one is Seismoriae, or better known as Longisliata. You can see how, look, <laughs> look at the rhizomes going off the side of the pot. Now it doesn't mean instant death, it just means it falls over a lot and it can't grow to its potential. So you've got to do something with it. Now that one, I'm not going to do that one today because that one's going to be quite a challenge. We'll have a think about that one, but we can certainly do the other two. So if you have rhizomatous begonias, uh, you might want to think about doing that, doing the same thing. So this one, I chopped all the leaves off, I waited till it to, uh, for it to grow a couple more, and now I'm going to take it out of its pot and see if we can get it growing uh, back in the centre again and hopefully doing what it should be doing. Actually, it's a good opportunity to propagate I did do a, a, a video about pro, uh, propagating, pro propagating, propagating uh, rhizomatous begonias, and that'll be, it's up on the channel now, and it's quite a recent one, so if you want to look that up, you can easily find that. It's very, very simple anyway, it's not like it's complicated, but if you don't know, you don't know. Um, that will be a good opportunity to do that, to actually uh, propagate it, but I'm not going to do that today. So let's have a look. I don't know if I can do this and get in the way, not get in the way. And we'll see. I think we'll go for this one first because I've got all the media out for it. If you are into this kind of thing and you grow these in a terrarium, I have been told that uh, Akadama, Akadama, is that the way you say it? I've never used it before, is an excellent potting medium for uh, Begonia arachnoidea, especially when it's mis mixed with uh, worm casts. 
Well, I could collect my own worm casts, couldn't I, in autumn? Um, but obviously I would like sterilised stuff. But I haven't got that. I have gone for something else. Um, I use what I've got in the greenhouse. I always try to use what I've got already before I go buying some other stuff. So I accessed ChatGPT, which is becoming ever more useful to me. And this is what it suggested. So we have in this little uh, tray down here, see if I can show you this. We have some charcoal roughly about 10% which keeps it sweet I believe uh, I think that basically means it doesn't rot quite as easily I've got some chunky bark husks I've got some perlite and I've got some sphagnum moss now that seems like rather a lot of material or lots of different materials I guess the akadama and the worm casts would be easier to deal with uh, and what will that give me? Well, we've said what the charcoal will give me. Uh, the moss will give me something to retain a little bit of moisture, but keep it airy and light and easy to drain through. Um, the bark will do something similar in maybe a different way. It won't, it'll probably dry out a little bit quicker than the moss will. And the uh, perlite will just open it up and give you some gaps. So that's really basically all it'll do. And I think you could have a dozen different other mixtures that will do roughly the same. I normally put begonias in nothing more complicated than multi-purpose compost and perlite and that works fine in my environment. Let's see how this does and this in fact is in multi-purpose compost and perlite and it's not done too bad considering as I mentioned earlier it was the humidity that uh, really saw to it, saw it off over the summer. And that's the only one that, that that happened to. All my other begonias uh, don't really seem to occur that much so long as the humidity is what we normally get in the UK, which is fairly high, if I'm honest. So let's take that out and let's see what we can come up with. Again, I don't know if I'm on camera here. This is one of the reasons why I need a proper camera because I can't keep trying to work like this. So, my plan is to get it in there, but I'm going to see, it's very wet, I've not watered it for ages. It's, uh, I do believe it can dry out a little bit, this one. I did the old, put it on a, on a tray of like stones and water trick to see if we could increase the humidity, but it's not a problem now because the humidity is permanently above 85 degrees in here now at this time of year. I think I did put a little bit of moss in there. I can see some moss. So you can see all the roots are down on one side. So it starts on that side and it's aiming to get over here. Well, if you can see, you might not be able to see anything whatsoever. Uh, and that's where all the roots are. So that needs moving more towards the center. So that is the situation. That's what I'm going to try and do so that it's got all that space then to go in that direction. It seems to be only going in that direction, so let's let it continue. Um, what I shouldn't have done there is mix my old media with my new. Silly Jeffrey. All right, move that over. Let's give that a bit of a mix. This will be really annoying if you can't see this because I'll have to do it all again. This is good stuff. It's like mixing a pie. And this is when you discover that you've not made nearly enough. And I'll have to go and get some more out. Now you can imagine if I had Akadama, am I saying that right? Akadama? If I had Akadama and the worm casts, then it would be much simpler instead of all these different things. So I'll get all the different things out again and have another bash. Oh, this is good stuff. I think I would like to grow in this. I think maybe the fact that it wasn't drying out is showing me that that was the wrong mixture. Now, I'll take my own advice here. 
Um, they do want to dry out. I've not watered it for ages and it hadn't. So this should be a lot area, a mixture area. Yes, a lot more airy. And we shall write on there, because I really don't want to lose this plant. Bought August 2023, so it's just over a year old. And all these plants, incidentally, are coming from the same person, Sophia. So if you're watching Sophie, Sophia, which I doubt you are, but if you're watching, thank you very much. Marvellous plants, brilliant prices. She's a great grower, and I've got a lot to learn from her in terms of begonias because there is a real uh, enthusiasts community who are so into their begonias and I think they all tend to grow the species. Um, you know, that already, it's, that is lighter than it was when it was in the, and that shows you the difference in the media. That's way lighter. So hopefully we're gonna give it some space there now and that can romp away now that we've got the space, the right media and, um, all the attention I can give it. What's that? Is that the roots? Part of the roots? Oh, could have been. Oh, well, it's gone now. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going to do the same with this somehow. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm sure you don't want to watch another one, another repot. So what can you tell me? Tell me in the comments. Do you like begonias? Do you like begonia arachnoidea? Uh, you'll be seeing some new ones coming along soon. Oh, that's a terrible leaf. I really want to get this one looking good. Do you grow yours in terrariums? Are you like so into it that you like to grow species? Because that's where the fun is. You really, you see the species, there are some amazing species, but of course they're harder to grow. So just as a little update here, a few minutes later, I have repotted my begonia solid silver. So there is an issue, as you can see. Now, in order to get it, so that most of the rhizome was actually touching any media, I've had to chop half the root ball in half. Now they are only fibrous roots. It will not damage it really. It might knock it back a little bit, but I doubt it knowing how vigorous this one is. Uh, but it does mean a large pot. Uh, most of the rhizome is now touching the surface. So that will enable that to root down there but then of course it won't be long before it's going off the side of the pot again. So I will leave this now and allow it to grow and do its thing and grow some more leaves. And when it gets to the point that it's coming off the side of the pot again, well, I'm not going to go for an even bigger pot. And I'm also not going to go for a shallow one. This does uh, take up rather a lot of moisture, this plant. Uh, even though it seems to be able to cope with low humidity and even though it does like to dry out, when it wants uh, moisture, it wants it. Uh, so I don't really mind about that being a heavier mix in this environment. So the next step will be to pull it out of that pot. Once this is rooted, I will then start to propagate uh, from this rhizome and then we can start again with a smaller, uh, more manageable uh, type of plant or size of plant. Another one that this has happened to, it seems to have happened to all of them at the same time, <coughs> is this Begonia melanobulata. Uh, we've got these leaves at the side of the pot again, running off with the rhizome, and it's just not looking great. It, again, it seems to be staying too wet. Uh, this is a prime Begonia for the lighter area mix. So I'm going to do that now. Um, that should be fairly easy to get that into a decent sized pot and see if we can get it growing properly again and growing as good as it has done in the past. Because as we say at the moment, because it's off the side of the pot and because it's not drying out properly, um, it's suffering a little bit. So that's gonna be my next job. And I'll just work my way through the greenhouse doing these different different begonia jobs. I have got others that are in a similar situation. We've got this huge one here. This is begonia uh, Bowerai Zumba. And this is also, I mean, it's so much, there's so much of it off the side of the pot um, that really all I would do there is take that, that extra bit of rhizome there, chop it straight off, chop some of the leaves off, some of the larger leaves, and simply pot it up and it will root in no time. 
so um, these are a lot hardier, these sorts of plants, uh, these sorts of hybrids. Some of them that I've been showing you, certainly the Melanobulata and the Arachnoidea are species, so you know they need a lot more specific care. Uh, so that's where we're up to, so let me know what you think about all this, um, and for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye!